Okay, good. So they got the father's health and the father's stamina and the father's melee. Perfect. the truth real fast and then we're probably done at last cause I got somewhere to be and you're done deceiving me into thinking I couldn't do better yeah I know I was probably crazy thinking someday you'd change there's nothing left to do now so I'm playing the game and so heartbreaker i've been working you out you made loads of mistakes but none that you talk about i'm watching every move you make and i'm on to you come on heartbreaker give in and surrender to me should have probably let me go but you got a porcelain ego talking fast and punching low making sure that there were no traces of thinking i could have done better yeah i know i was probably crazy thinking someday you'd change there's nothing left to do now, so I'm playing the game. And so, heartbreaker, I've been working you out. You made loads of mistakes, but none that you talk about. I'm watching every move you make, and I'm on to you. Come on, heartbreaker, give in. Welcome back, everybody, to Ark Survival Ascendant. I'm an old guy, gaming, and in this episode, we are going to get started with our Megalodon army. I have tamed up a 130 female and a 145 male. Uh, so hopefully that'll get us off to a decent start here. Um, and a few things to get you guys updated on. Uh, first of all, we have captured a couple of... Ichthyor, Ichthyosauruses. Well, one anyways. Uh, what level are you, dude? You want cooked prime. Um, I can't tell what level it is, but if it's here, <laughs> why not, right? Uh, here, let's take this off and this off. So the first thing you might notice is that uh, the sea base is a little bit different. It's uh, not only a little bit different, but it's also... Um, oh, actually, never mind. Uh, it's also in a different location. Um, the reason... Oh, I got two these here. Okay. Um, you were level 15. You know what? I don't want a level 15. You're 45. Okay, let's at least... Give you something. Um, I don't... Yeah, I don't want the 45. We'll have uh, one of the berries eat it. We'll let that guy swim around for a few minutes, and then we'll nab him later. He's still pretty low level, but... Uh... Oh, wait a second. Is this a third one that swam in with us? Or is that the... Uh... A level 10. No. Okay, so... Um... That's the one we're still trying to feed. 
wait until it's hungry again. That's what I figured you were going to say. Okay, so um, I had to move to a new location. Uh, I'm, and I'm, I'm actually just a little further south down the coast than, than the original location. And um, the reason for that is because of the coral. So I just, we, I had so much trouble with the berries in particular, but even with the, you know, the larger dinos getting in and out of the base and just getting stuck on the coral that I finally, um, I finally decided, well, I'm going to need to move. So let's jump on a bird here. Oh, actually, hold on. Before we do this, I want to get these two sharks breeding. Uh, I've had some pretty bad luck, too, um, over the last several you want to eat now? Not yet. Uh, last several, actually, days, uh, real-time days, um, I've lost a couple of sharks. I lost my own life and all of my really good gear. And I've been supremely frustrated with the AI pathing of the baryonyxes in particular in the water. Um, so, yeah, I just had some bad luck and... And a couple of not the smartest moves on my part either um, that all led to that. Uh, the first shark we lost when I was trying to tame another one and a big pack of them came in and killed um, my a female 130 that I had tamed. The second shark was a male 135 that I had to go AFK. So I parked it, um, I beached it on the shore, put it on passive, told my berries to guard it, put them on neutral to guard it. When I came back, the shark was dead, and it was because the berries got stuck in the coral and wasn't able to defend it when some mantas came up and ate it. So that coral is just as frustrating as all get out, you guys. I hate it. Absolutely hate the coral um, in this game. It's It sucks. Uh, anyway, what I'm trying to do, I'm sorry, I'm, I've got too many things going on in my head all at the same time. Uh, so yeah, we had some bad luck, but in the long run, um, I've been able to tame a higher level male shark anyways, this guy right here. And let's get his saddle on and get him going uh, with the breeding with our female over here. Um, looks like the ichthy is stuck now. Can we can we tame it? Come here, you little bastard. He's being he's being um, evasive. There we go. All right, we're just gonna call you Icky. And let's make sure you are on passive and not following me. Okay. So, um, let's see here. I want to get them lined up a little bit better than this. So let's move you kind of more this direction. That should work. Because I need to get below the female once the baby's born. Okay, you should be on passive. Let's enable mating on you. I gotta look at the stats of the male too. I haven't, oh shit. I haven't really um, paid or, or had a chance to do that because I wanted to just, I just wanted to get him back um, after all the bullshit I've had to do, deal with. Okay, so. Wait, ready to mate? Oh, remove following. There we go. Okay. All right, cool. So both of those uh, sharks are mating now. And I want to, uh, like I said, I want to check the stats on the male here. Let's just put this back on for a second. So we don't have to worry about air. Okay, so fifth. Ooh, wow. 50 health. That is really, really good. I mean, that is super good. Uh, 44 stamina is pretty good, not that we care about that so much, because I'm not really going to be riding these guys. And 36 damage, which is average. Okay, but that health is good. That is a super good health stat. Uh, okay, cool. Um, let me get this uh, recorded really quick in my spreadsheet. Hold on a sec. Okay, so you are going to... Uh, we're going to call you... Whoops, wrong button. Wildfather 145. Fantastic. Okay, so gestation is in 36 minutes, so I'll have to. I'm going to set my um, timer for that. Okay. Um, 
Let's, um... What am I looking for? I should have an ichthy saddle in here. Actually, I got a really good ichthy saddle. Let's just take this guy for a spin. Um... I'm gonna put a couple things on the bird here. We'll take this guy for a spin. Actually, before we do that, yeah, let me show you... Uh, the old base location and why it was such a pain in the ass. So, the old base was actually just right on the other side of these rocks here. And like I said, the reason I had to move is because of the coral. The coral was just being a major pain in the ass. So, I had set the base up right here. Everything has since respawned, you know, the resources and all that. But, there's, there's a couple of different kinds of coral. Um, let's see here. So, this kind of saguaro cactus looking coral you can't break. Uh, why in the hell we can we can break this kind, but we can't break that? I, I don't know. Uh, but they made it like a static, I guess they call that a static uh, asset or whatever. Um, so I couldn't, I couldn't break those. And so they would, you know, they stick up and the dinos would get caught on them. And the water was just so shallow that I couldn't, I had a really hard time getting uh, the bassy, and it was almost impossible to get the megalodon into the base because they would just, you know, the water's too shallow here and they would get caught on these little saguaro cactus looking corals. And, and so I finally got so frustrated with it, I said, screw it, I, I, gotta, I gotta build a new base somewhere where we have more clearance. And so that, you know, that's pretty much what happened with that. Um, the new base is a little bit larger. And um, it's still probably ultimately not going to be large enough for, you know, the full army. Um, so I'm going to have to expand it or do something with it. Uh, but, you know, at least it's it's getting us started. All right. So let's go back over to here. So, as yeah, as you can see, it's kind of more of an oval shape um, than just the, the squares that we had. And... Basically, the almost the entire, if not the entire, inside of the base is just pure sand. There's no, there's no coral. Uh, once you, we do get into the coral, the water is deep enough here to where we have enough clearance to get everything in and out. And so, as far as expanding goes, I'm probably going to just keep expanding this way. Uh, and again, just staying on the sand here, because uh, the nice thing about this particular spot here is that it gets it starts to get pretty deep pretty fast uh, i mean deep enough to where we have clearance for even the the largest well i don't know about a two so but you know i'm not really worried about a two so I, i'm mostly or even a mosasaur i'm not saying we won't tame one but i'm really more interested just in bassies and megalodons uh, at least for our army and so um and i have my anki here too by the way so this this kind of tube looking coral that I can break, but I can't break the saguaro stuff. But I think, you know, there's enough clearance. Uh, we, in fact, we don't even need necessarily to have a, an opening, though this one would probably work through here when we expand the base over. Um, we just need more room, basically, for, for breeding the army. I also, uh, I'd looked around uh, all along the western shore, as a matter of fact, and considered a couple of other places, too. Uh, one spot right up by just before um, the ice starts. The advantage of being up there is we'd be really close to pearls and organic polymer. Um, the disadvantage is the place that I was would build the base on the shore is very close to a gigaspawn, and I would have had to make it, make it out of metal, and I just, you know, I said, you know what, I don't think I want to screw with that. Uh, I also tried to see if it was possible to maybe use this bay as a water pin. But here again, we have the same issue where there's a whole shit ton of coral, non-harvestable saguaro cactus style coral at the entrance, which is already really shallow. And I just, I, I, I said, you know, I might be able to get this to work, but there's so much of that shit around. I just didn't, I, I decided screw it. I don't, I don't want to go to the trouble uh, to do that. And again, I wish Wildcard would have at least made the saguaro cactus coral harvestable. 
breakable. Um, if if that was breakable, then a situation that is almost impossible would just be a pain in the ass. But there's nothing you can do about it. You know, your dinos get stuck on that coral and they're stuck. They're, they're just, there's nothing you have to, if they're like really bad stuck, you got to ghost them out. Um, so it's just, yeah, I don't know if they thought that through very well or what, but they've made it extremely difficult to make this bay here a water pin, which is something that a lot of players in this game, you know, have, you know, would like to do and, and have done in the past. But I'll show you here again what I'm talking about. So let's put uh, this on. So yeah, you, you got all of this coral here, and some of it, like I said, is the saguaro cactus coral, and you can't harvest it. So it, you're basically, you know, getting a large dino through here would be a maze uh, if you could even do it at all. And, and I decided after... You know, I brought the Anki over here, and I tried to break as much of it as I could, but it just, you know, it's possible you could get a make through here, but then you got this little saguaro cactus and this little saguaro cactus that they they could get caught on, and it's just... And then, you know, even if you can get them through, there's a whole shitload of coral over here that you got to clear out of the way, too. <laughs> so it's just... I don't know. I, I wish, you know, the coral's cool visually. I wish they would have just made it all no collision you know that that would solve the problem too because you can get resources from coral but it's nothing fancy it's nothing really better than stone it's basically like stone you know you get a little flint you get a little bit of metal you get a little stone that sort of thing um even if they would have just made it with no collision that that would solve the problem too and then you could have it and it would be cool looking but unfortunately it is a problem so yeah it sucks but it is what it is Okay, now, the other thing I want to complain about, uh, and, and the, you know, I, I try not to complain too much. I, I do a little bit, but hopefully it's for the, you know, uh, the purpose of pointing something out that can be improved. And, um, but here's the thing with the Baryonyx. They are exceptional combat dinos in the water. I mean, they just kick ass and take names in the water. But... If you are near the shore or near the bottom of the sea, what their AI pathing has them do is it has them try and find a path along the bottom of the sea instead of just fucking swimming. It is supremely frustrating, you guys. I, I can't tell you how frustrating it was. Um, to the point where, you know, because when, when I originally started, I would take them all with me because, you know, serious protection, right? You can pretty much just rip a new one on anything in the ocean, um, except for maybe the highest level alphas. Uh, they're that good at combat. But if you, like I said, if you're swimming anywhere near the shore, what they would do, especially if you had them on, on you know, the longer follow distance, is they would try and follow you, but along the edge of, of the seabed there. And then they would get caught on coral and rocks and, and all that sort of thing. And I just, I, I got so frustrated with it that I finally said, all right, screw it. I'm not taking them out with me. I'm just going to go out on one because they're really good dinos to tame something, you know, because you can shoot from their back and just, you know, try and be more careful. So, yeah, um, that's pretty much it, I guess, uh, to, <laughs> to get you caught up on, you know, what's happened. I've spent the vast majority of my time since the last episode here at the sea, uh, I've flown back to the base a couple of times for some supplies and things like that. But, uh, most of the time I've spent here, um, you know, just rebuilding this base and going out, looking for dinos, going out, finding dinos, came them and getting killed, you know, and all that kind of thing. So anyway, let's pop, uh, this on you and we'll just take you for a spin. Um, the best thing about these guys is they're, they're just really, really fast. Um, even though, you know, this one is a, a very low level one. Let's just take him for a spin and see, you know, how fast he is. So, yeah, he's uh, he cruises along pretty good. And I, I would never, of course, use this dino for combat. So probably stamina and weight would be the two, the two things that... Uh, you would want to 
put into them. And even the stamp's not that bad. I mean, yeah, we're we, we're going along here, and it's, it's only down by about 20%, if even that, so far. Uh, so, you know, you could certainly use them as a a transport dyno, assuming they could they could handle the weight. But uh, yeah, very fast. Um, there's, I'm sure there's nothing in the wild that could catch this thing. Uh, the Plesiosaur too is is actually also a fast dyno. Uh, I, I I was uh, mentioning the other day, and maybe you guys have commented. I haven't seen those co that those comments yet because that video hasn't been released. You know what what are they really good for? And then it occurred to me, you know, they are fast, so so they're also very good travel dinos. And you can put a platform saddle on them too, by the way. Um, so there is that, I suppose. I never really found that to be super useful, but you can do the same thing with a mosasaur too. I guess it just depends upon you know what sort of sea operations you're doing. But yeah, this guy's this guy's not bad. If I had to just make a quick trip somewhere, uh, we could certainly take him for that. So we'll hang on to him since it was a super easy tame of opportunity. Um, and I think. I think your stamina is actually pretty damn good. I, I, I think we're just going to put points and weight on you. That's all we really need to worry about. Hey, you want to swim in here? What level are you? Your level. I can't. I can't tell. One. Ooh, 145. Hmm. Could we lure that thing in here? That that was that. Yeah, that level 15 we were going to try and kill. Okay, hold on. Let's close that door. Let's open this one, because he, he's right there. Come on in, buddy. There's lots of room for you in here. Oh, he's getting stuck in the... What if we... open the door from the other direction? Open this one and this one. Now let's just go in here and see if they swim up to us. Oh, he just about came in. Oh, wait a minute. We have... What's this one here? That's a level 10. There's the 145. Okay, now can we get the door closed before he swims back out? Very nice. Okay, well, that's one way to do it. <laughs> that is one way to do it. Nice. 145, Ichthy. That's going to be even better. Um, let me see actually what their favorite thing is. It's probably the kibble. Um, Ichthyosaurus. Simple kibble or mutton. But, you know, there's... It's three mutton or two simple kibble. Let's just feed it mutton. Um, so, it says three will do it. We'll grab five just in case it spoils. Nice. I mean, I you know, I could use traps to tame sea creatures, and I have before. But, uh, I don't know. I, I find it easier... Maybe not safer per se, but easier just to get out on a berry and and shoot them, you know, out in the wild like that. Let the berry tank them a little bit. It's always worked very well for me. Um, you just have to make sure, you know, you clear the area of baddies. And then for ocean tames, what I typically will do is I'll just make sure they have enough food on, in their inventory and then I'll just leave them. Because once you leave the area, everything goes into stasis and then, you know, nothing's going to hurt it until it tames. Uh, so that seems to be the the easiest way to handle that, I think. All right, let's see. How much time do you have? You have 21 minutes left. Okay. I think I want to move you a, a little bit further away. Yeah, we're definitely going to need to expand this base. Um, I mean, just these three big guys here are already <laughs> taking up like a third of the base. And it's just going to get worse from here as we start to tame. So I have um, 
I have more behemoth gates back at the base. So I, I think the plan will be as we'll just keep pushing. We'll just keep pushing the base along the beach there. Um, let's go up this way. So we definitely can push along that way. I don't know if we have a lot of good room to expand this way. No, not really. Um, cause the cause the shoreline kind of curves out a bit, so it wouldn't really make sense to go that direction. I, I can't really go further that way. I mean, I could, I suppose, but then we're getting into all the coral and shit again, and I just don't want to deal with that. Um, but we can definitely expand this way for uh, you know maybe a couple more behemoth gates, anyways, and make that work, and then. Uh, you know, then we'll have more room for, for breeding and all of that. All right, well, I'll tell you what. Let's. I, I'm going to pause the camera here. I'll bring you guys back when the baby shark is born, and we'll check its stats and then go from there. All right, um, our baby should be ready to pop out in a second. Where'd that ichthy go? I was... Uh, Tabbed out there for a minute doing stuff. Here it is. Oh, we lost, shit. It lost all our David effect this one on it. All right, no big deal. We'll do that later again. I guess I was tabbed out for a little bit too long. Um, all right, let's see. How close are you? You are 23 seconds out. Yeah, I was actually uh, started editing the first part of this video. And I was, Kind of forgot to come back in and feed that, but it, it's not going anywhere, so I just had to pay more attention, which is hard for me to do sometimes. And here we go. Baby shark, um, somewhere. Let's uh, move you out of the way. There it is. Oh, we got twins. Nice. Okay. Uh, can we get... Let's pull the other one away. All right, nice. Um, I I'm ass I assume they just eat fish as opposed to red meat, but let's grab both just in case, because I know um, the basilosaur prefers red regular meat, not fish. I got so much fish, it's coming out my ears. All right, so which one of these do you want? Uh, definitely fish. Okay. That's kind of what I figured. Okay, you stay there. Let's get this some food in the other baby. And I want you to be passive, and I want you to follow me on low... Low follow. And same thing for you. Passive and uh, low follow. Uh oh, I guess we need to tell the baby to follow us if we want it to. Let's bring it over bring him over here and take a look at him. Always nice to get twins, because now we have two. Of course, that we can imprint. I, I'm not even taking the wilds out at all, period. End of discussion. Because <laughs> that's how I lost the other ones. Uh, we'll, 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 bloop, we will only take them out when they are imprinted. Oh, great. I'm stuck. Oh, there we go. Maybe, yeah, okay. So these two were both twins, so they're going to be exactly the same as far as stats go. So let's see what we got. And they're both females too, which is great because more breeding, right? Okay, good. So they got the father's health and the father's stamina. And the father's melee. Perfect. That's exactly what we, uh, the outcome we w would like to see. Uh, let me bring up my spreadsheet here. Yep, exactly. So they got all of the good stats from the father. So we're off to a good start here. Maybe the game's given me a break after kicking my ass so much over the last couple of days. Love it. Okay, so yeah, what we'll do then is once these two grow up, we will breed them with the, with the father. Um... And then, and, and we'll already basically have our base pair, uh, or, or yeah, we'll have our base pair. Uh, Wild Mother 130, we're, we don't need her anymore. I mean, I, I can take her out now, and if she, you know, if we lose her, we lose her. It's not a big deal now. 
Um, but I'll probably wait until these these two are fully grown, um, just just be on the safe side because you just never know, you know, you never know what might happen. Uh, let's let's give that ichthy another feeding here. Grab a couple more muttons. It's probably ready by now. I like the little sounds I make. <laughs> Okay, two more feedings on that, and then we'll have a almost max level uh, ichthyosaur, ichthyosaurus, I guess. I always want to say ichthyornis, but that's the devil bird. All right, cool guys. Um, well, I think um, it, it, we're kind of just really at a stopping point here. There's, there's not, we don't really have time to do a whole lot more. Uh, so I'm just going to keep going out now, uh, looking for bassies, and of course, if I if I find a a really high level wild shark. I'll, I'll, I'll tame it too, just to see if we can maybe get a better melee stat. Cause I'm super, super happy with the, the health stat. It doesn't really get much better than that. Um, but, uh, we could definitely do better on a melee stat. Uh, so we'll keep looking for those. And I, I think, um, I, and I'm going to expand the, the base too, as we start to, you know, have more babies and, and need more room. Uh, but I think, the tentative plan for the next episode is that we will, uh, you know, once I kind of have things established here at the sea base, I think we're going to go back uh, to the main base and hop on the dinos and start doing some more caves. Um, by the way, Soldier 2 is really scary powerful now. <laughs> he's, he's got a, over 800 melee damage, and he's just, um, he's just kicking ass and taking names. And then... You know, so all of these berry. You know what, though, I, I might actually keep a berry here. Um, I I have another batch of eggs that I need to hatch at the main base. Um, I I think we'll we'll keep a berry here. Maybe we'll keep soldier one here. Um, and we'll just always use it for taming. And it, you know, it's over seven hundred, uh, two, and climbing. Uh, so yeah, but but I want to take uh, Barrymore back because she's a female, so that way we have the the mate boost. But then, like I said, I have a whole another batch, and you know I've already got my base uh, mom, uh, mother and father, mothers and father for these guys too, um, with uh, really really good stats. Uh, so fifty one health, and I think f or no, it was here. Well, here let's just look. What? No, open that up. Uh, yeah. 37 health, which is good. It's not super good, but it's pretty good. Uh, but 51 stamina and 51, uh, yeah, 51 melee, uh, which is the number, uh, look on the right-hand side of my screen, the first number in, uh, on the left-hand side where it says 51. So these guys are just, I, I lucked out so much by finding that Baryonyx father with those stats. So we're doing good. So yeah. Anyway, all that to say, plan for the next episode is we're gonna do we're gonna do some caves, um, either probably lava cave or maybe northeast cave, or maybe even the swamp cave. I don't know. We'll see, and um, we'll go from there. So thanks everybody for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share out the video, and we'll catch y'all in the next episode. Bye bye.